Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is again for ST601 Statistics in English and our fourth uh, seminar. Uh, today we'll start with uh, something new. We will move from uh, descriptive statistics and uh, measures of central tendency and measures of variability to different part of uh, descriptive uh, statistics. Uh, we'll start with descriptive analysis of dependence. Uh, analysis of dependence. Uh, we can observe yes, uh, some dependence or independence between two or more uh, variables. Yes. So today we'll start with uh, contingency tables. It's necessary to know that this table has uh, rows and uh, columns. And uh, inside uh, this table, uh, we can observe uh, frequencies, absolute or relative frequencies. Everything is still the same. Absolute frequencies uh, denoted by N, relative frequencies denoted by P. We are using indices E and J, uh, E rows and J columns. Yes, and. Uh, other issues. So we will start with uh, first example. I have prepared uh, this example here. You can see that uh, it's a sorted statistical table with frequencies, empirical frequencies, uh, and there is written there were surveyed uh, 93 patients uh, suffering by a disease. Uh, whether they were vaccinated and what is the development of the disease. And there is a question, does the development of the disease depend on whether the patient was vaccinated? This, uh, this is current topic uh, right now in these times. Uh, so uh, we have here two variables, yes. Uh, the variable one, patient was vaccinated, yes, yes or no and uh, the development of the disease mild and hard yes and there we have uh, sorted frequencies n e j this table has e rows and j columns yes so two times two is the size of this uh, table so uh, we will uh, calculate the value of G, statistic G, and according to this statistic G, uh, we'll calculate uh, two uh, important coefficients, Pearson contingency coefficient C and the Kramer coefficient of contingency V, and we will interpret the results. Okay, so I rewrite it, uh, the table on the whiteboard, yes, with uh, empirical observed absolute frequencies, NEJ. Uh, what is necessary for the calculation of a value of G? I have my formulas here on the table uh, next to the whiteboard, yes, and I will rewrite this formula. There is a written summation through all rows, summation through all columns, yes, uh, and there is difference N E J minus N E J with stripe squared divided by N E J with stripe. We have an EJ, yes, observed uh, empirical frequency. So uh, we need to calculate, to recalculate this empirical table to theoretical table N E J with stripe. Theoretical table, <clears throat> how this table will look like if uh, variable one and variable two will be independent, yes, absolutely independent. So there will be again mild and hard and the patient was vaccinated, yes and no. Yes. So there will be the same table but with different frequencies. So for the calculation of N E J with stripe, what we need N E J with stripe is equal to I will rewrite 
this formula uh, from this screen n e dot times n dot j n e dot times n dot j divided by n this is very important and uh, <laughs> if you see this formula for the first time during the midterm test you probably don't know how to solve this yeah? so pay attention right now to this formula because there is a multiplication yes there is a multiplication and these n e dot and n dot j uh, these frequencies are marginal frequencies the side frequencies calculated uh, here in this table yes m e dot and m dot j and as i said marginal frequencies marginal frequencies so i will calculate these frequencies very easy uh, like a summation summation of values in rows and summation of values in columns yes uh, okay i will delete this it will be more clear for you yes okay so marginal frequency 33 plus 9 yes? 33 plus 9 is equal to 42 15 plus 36 is equal to 51 yes 33 plus 15 is equal to 48 and here 9 plus 36 is equal to 45 so now we have here 4 marginal frequencies uh, there must be an uh, summation of marginal frequencies in rows must be equal to summation of marginal frequencies in columns so 48 plus 45 is equal to 93 patients yes and verification 42 plus 51 must be equal to 93 yes nobody is sick so we have here marginal frequencies this one this one this one and this one yes so according to this very important formula we will recalculate the frequencies here yes uh, expected frequencies theoretical frequencies uh, yes how the frequencies will look uh, looks like uh, in the table if variables will be independent yes okay so uh, now the multiplication uh, 42 and 48 42 times 48 divided by 93 yes so this will be the first result here and we can continue 42 and 45 42 and 45 divided by 93 yes and we will have result here and we can continue 51 and 48 yes 51 times 48 divided by 93 and this result will be here yes? so this is a this is b this is c and finally finally there will be D, yes, D, and there will be 51 and 45. 51 times 45 divided by 93, yes, so A, B, C, D, and I will solve this, yes, right now. Uh, 42 times 48 divided by 93 uh, I will use only uh, two decimals yes, only two decimals so 21 
uh, 21.68 Okay, and we can continue another result 42 times 45 divided by 93 uh, 20.32 20.32 Okay, another result this one 51 times 48 divided by 93 uh, 26 26 point uh, 32 and finally 51 times 45 divided by 93 uh, 24 point 24 point 68 okay so the table with expected theoretical frequencies uh, and there is table with empirical frequencies yes so only this we had at the beginning yes only this we had at the beginning and everything else is calculated uh, okay so now we have these frequencies and we are able to calculate the value of G yes the value of G how I will write this formula one more time on the whiteboard the G value is equal to uh, summation through all rows summation through all columns n e j minus n e j with stripe it must be in squares divided by n e j with stripe yes so it's very easy because we have only four values so there we will calculate uh, four square differences yes so uh, we can do this 33 minus 21.68 it must be in squares divided by 21.68 and we will continue three other steps yes plus another value here so 9 minus 20.32 it must be in squares divided by 20.32 plus and we can continue plus uh, okay which value this value 15 yes 15 minus 26.32 it must be in squares divided by 26.32 plus and finally 36 and 24.68 36 minus 24.68 squared divided by 24.68 yes you can see that this is very easy easy calculations but a lot of steps yes we must be careful very careful with calculation yes so slowly slowly and we will solve it uh, okay, I need a space, yes? So I will delete this table, independent table, yes? Table with uh, expected theoretical frequencies, yes? So value G will be equal to 33 minus 21.68 squared divided by 21.68 enter 5.91 5.91 yes plus uh, another value another result 9 minus 20.32 squared divided by 20.32 
6.31 plus uh, energy result 15 minus 26.32 uh, squared divided by 26.32 uh, 4.87 4.87 and the last one 36 minus 24.68 squared divided by uh, 24.68 uh, 5.19 5.19 okay so the value of G is equal to uh, 5.91 plus 6.31 plus 4.87 plus 5.19 22.28 Okay, so this is the statistic G the value of G calculated on the basis of uh, the data Yes, and our calculated uh, theoretical frequencies uh, or how the frequencies uh, looks like yes, if uh, variable A and variable E uh, variable B uh, will be independent yes uh, okay so we will rewrite uh, from our formulas the formula for Pearson coefficient of contingency C and Kramer coefficient of contingency V. According to formulas, the C value yes, will be equal to there is square root uh, G divided by G plus M. So you can see that this is uh, very easy because we have uh, statistic G uh, calculated, calculated here and we know that uh, the sample size is equal to 93 patients. So uh, there will be square root uh, value of G 22.28 will be divided by 22.28 plus 93 yes so i will calculate this c value value of pearson coefficient of contingency c so this will be uh, pearson coefficient yes so uh, 22.28 divided by uh, 22.28 uh, plus 93 enter uh, and now square root from this value uh, okay so 0 0.4396 uh, okay so this is the statistic this is the coefficient and uh, we must know how to interpret this value uh, we must know the minimum and maximum of this coefficient. The minimum is uh, zero, yes. The minimum is uh, zero, but maximum is not one, like for example in the case of Kramer coefficient of contingency. We must calculate this maximum, yes. Uh, that is written the maximum is calculated like square root m uh, uh, m minus 1 uh, divided by m there is parenthesis m minus 1 divided by m and m is minimum from rows and columns yes m is equal to minimum minimum from rows and columns yes so in our situation what is smaller two or two two yes so uh, we will calculate this like two minus uh, one divided by two yes so there is two minus one 
divided by 2 and square root, yes? So, uh, 1 divided by 2 is 1 half and square root from this 1 half is 0 0.7 Zero seven one. Uh, so I will write it here. Pearson element, and there is the range zero uh, and zero point seven o seven one. Yes. So this is our maximum for the table for the table two times two. Yes. So this is valid for table 2 times 2. If you have a, a different size of the table, this maximum is different, yes? Okay, so now we know where are placed, yes, with this coefficient. Uh, so we can say that there is uh, some uh, middle uh, strength dependence, yes, but uh, this is very uh, subjective, yes, individual, and uh, everybody, yes, can uh, interpret and everybody can feel this strength uh, differently, yes. So maybe better for interpretation is Kramer coefficient V. So I will delete uh, this part, yes, and we will calculate the Kramer coefficient V because Kramer uh, has minimum zero and maximum one every time, yes. Maximum is one in the case that there is perfect perfect strength, perfect dependence between first and second variable, yes? So we will see where we uh, are placed, yes? Between 0 and 1 in the case of uh, Kramer, Kramer coefficient V, yes? So I will rewrite this uh, V value uh, from the screen, uh, there is square root and we have here statistic G divided by N times M minus 1. Yes? Uh, again, uh, this M is minimum, minimum from rows and columns. Yes? Uh, so again, uh, this value will be 2. We have here 2 rows and 2 columns, yes? So, statistic G, 22.28 divided by uh, 93 patients times uh, 2 minus 1 and there is the root, yes? So, Again, I will use, for example, four decimals and uh, we will solve this. So, 22.28 divided by, uh, that is 93 times 1, yeah? so divided by uh, 93, 93 times 1, uh, and square root from this value, and the result is 0 0.4. 895 0.4895 and now this is easy because we know that this is element of range 0 and 1 yes uh, so we are almost in the middle yes almost in the middle almost 0.5 uh, so, almost, how to say, for example, middle strength dependence between vaccination yes, and the development of the disease. So, remember, Mr. Hellman said to you that this uh, verbal interpretation is very subjective, yes? Uh, the sentence yes, is subjective, uh, but uh, we know 
that minimum is zero and maximum is one in the case of this uh, coefficient. And uh, we, can, uh, we can see the strength, yes? we can imagine the strength if you know that minimum is zero, maximum is one. Yes? We will do the same one more time, but now with a little bit higher table. Because this method is uh, universal, general, yes? General for any table, any size of the table. Uh, so we will do this, uh, with this example. Uh, 100 randomly selected people, drivers, yes? Uh, in many countries in the world, it's prohibited uh, to drink uh, alcohol uh, before driving, yes, uh, of car or motorcycle. Uh, so, let us observe the relation between the level of alcohol in blood, low, middle and high. Uh, this is again a subjective evaluation, yes, because uh, we don't know uh, how many beers or shots Yes, it's uh, for anybody uh, low level, middle level, yes, uh, so it's again a subjective scale, yes, but uh, we have uh, divided this to low, middle and high level of alcohol and blood and the speed of the reaction in car, yes, during driving, good reaction, bad reaction, yes, by 100 randomly selected people. And there is a question, is there a relation, yes, so probably yes, yes, probably there is a relation, but we would like to calculate some coefficient and interpret the, uh, the strength of this relation. So, you know that we have uh, two coefficients, Kramer coefficient of contingency V, which is uh, a little bit better, uh, because we know that uh, minimum is zero, maximum is one, and we, uh, we know we know directly where we are placed, yes? And uh, of course the Pearson coefficient of contingency C, uh, where minimum is zero and maximum we must calculate, yes? So maximum is not one, maximum must be calculated. So I will do this one more time on the uh, table and we will see, uh, we will see the strength of the relation Okay, so there is a rewrited table. Rewrited table with uh, which frequencies? Absolute frequencies and we can call these frequencies empirical frequencies, yes? Empirical values. So it's uh, necessary to use this formula L E J with stripe equal to N E dot times n dot j divided by n and recalculate this table yes, uh, to table with uh, theoretical frequencies, expected frequencies. Yes? So what we need for this? Uh, calculate these marginal frequencies, frequencies on the side of the table, yes? Summation of rows, summation of columns, n e dot and n dot j, yes? Uh, so these frequencies will be calculated here, yes? Here and here, okay? So these marginal frequencies uh, 53 point, uh, plus uh, 12, yes, 53 plus 12 is equal to 65. 5 plus uh, 15, 20, yes, and 2 plus 13 is 15. Okay, so another summation, 53 uh, plus 2 is 55, plus 5 is 60. And there must be 40, yes? Uh, 12 plus 15 plus 13 must be 40 because there must be the sample size 100 drinking drivers, yes? 100 drinking drivers. 
Okay, so uh, the table M E J with stripe. Yes. Good reaction, bad reaction. Yes. And low level, middle level, and high level. Yes. So very easy. How to solve this? Uh, Sixty-five uh, times sixty divided by one hundred. Yes. First result will be here. Uh, here sixty-five times uh, forty. Yes. Divided by one hundred. Uh, I don't have enough space here, yes? so low level, equal sign, equal sign, yes, uh, middle level, uh, this value and this value, yes, so there will be 20 times uh, 60 divided by 100 and 20 and 40. 20 times 40 divided by 100, yes, equal sign, equal sign, okay, and finally high level, yes, uh, 15 and 60, and after 15 and 40, yes, so 15 times 60 divided by 100, Equal sign and 15, 15 times 40 divided by 100. Equal sign, yes? And now I will solve this, yes? So 65 times 60 divided by 100. 39, yes? 39. Uh, here, 65 times 40 divided by 100, 26, yes, 26, uh, here, 20 times 60 divided by 112, uh, here, uh, 20 times 40 divided by 108, and uh, here, 15, times 60 divided by 109 and finally the last result 15 times 40 divided by 106 yes so you can see it's easy but a lot of steps yes uh, so we have uh, calculated uh, expected Theoretical frequencies, yes. These frequencies: 39, 26, 12, 8, 9, and 6. Uh, we have uh, empirical frequencies here. I don't need these marginal frequencies anymore uh, because now we can move uh, to calculation the value of g, yes value of G is equal to, there will be summation through all rows and uh, summation through all columns, yes, and uh, there is a difference, N, E, J, and N, E, J with stripe, this must be in squares, divided by M, E, J with stripe, yes? <clears throat> so, how many partial results? Uh, six. Six partial results, yes? Uh, I don't know where I write this, uh, so I will try it, yes? So, very small letters. Uh, 53 minus 39, 39, this must be in squares, divided by 39, yes? Okay, we can continue, plus uh, 12 minus uh, 26, 26, this must be in squares divided by 26, yes? 
plus uh, 5 and 12. Yes, 5 minus 12. This must be in squares divided by 12. Yes, uh, <laughs> there is uh, value 9. Yes, and there is value 6. I must delete this. Yes, uh, because of space. Yes, so sorry for this. We can continue. Plus, uh, okay, so 15. Yes, 15 minus uh, 8. Yes, 8. It's squared divided by 8. Plus, uh, I will delete this. And we have here last two uh, values, last two partial results. Yes, two, two minus, and there on this position was value nine. Yes, nine squared divided by nine plus, and finally uh, this thirteen and six. Yes, thirteen minus six squared divided by six. Yes, okay, so we know how to solve this. Uh, so I will do it. 53 minus 39 squared divided by 39, uh, 5.03. So G is equal to 5.03 plus uh, 12 minus 26 squared divided by 26. 7.54 7.54 plus 5 minus 12 squared divided by 12 4.08 4.08 plus uh, 15 minus 8 squared divided by 8 uh, 6.13 6.13 plus uh, 2 minus 9 squared divided by 9, uh, 5.44 and last value 13 minus 6 squared divided by 6, 8.17, 8.17. So, I will delete uh, this uh, theoretical table because we need a lot of space, yes? Uh, okay, so the value of G will be written here, yes? So, 5.03 plus 7.54 plus 4.08 plus 6.13 plus 5.44 plus 8.17 so result should be 36.39 yes this is the value of g the g is a special statistic we will use this statistic uh, also later in the future yes uh, in different analyses, and now it will be necessary to rewrite from uh, the formulas, the formula for C value, yes, and the formula for uh, Kremer V, the V value, yes, C value, and V value. So I will use your formula sheet, and we will solve this. I will write uh, the square root and that is ratio G divided by G plus N. So in our situation it's a square root where we have here 36.39 divided by 36.39 plus 
100. Yeah? So this is uh, the formula for calculation of uh, Pearson coefficient C and the Kremer coefficient V is calculated like then we have G value divided by and then we have N times M uh, minus uh, 1 M is minimum from rows and columns. Yes, M is uh, minimum from rows and columns. So in this table we have uh, three rows and two columns. So what is smaller? Smaller is value 2. Yes, so we will calculate this coefficient like square root. 36.39 divided by 100 drivers times 2 minus 1. Yes, so uh, again I need more space, so I will delete this line and we will calculate these coefficients. Uh, but uh, it's important to know that C value. Uh, C value has a calculated maximum as the minimum is zero and maximum is calculated like uh, there we have square root M minus one divided by M yes so this is the maximum of this uh, Pearson coefficient. So uh, 2 minus 1 in parentheses divided by 2 is equal to, so there will be again a uh, square root. Yes, so this is the maximum of this uh, Pearson C coefficient. So there will be 1 divided by 2, yes, 1 divided by 2 and uh, square root, square root from this value is again 0 0.7071 uh, yes, uh, we already had this value before because uh, for the table, uh, contingency table 2 times 2 is this maximum the same, yes, because minimum from rows and columns is again 2 Yes, so this is the potential maximum uh, of uh, the Pearson C coefficient. And now we must calculate uh, these coefficients. So I will delete this line and the C value will be here. C value is equal to, okay, so that is 36.79 divided by 136.39 and the square root from this value 0 0.517 0 0.517 uh, Okay, so uh, this is element of range 0 and 0 0.707 yes, 707 so you can see where is placed your coefficient C so uh, it's strength dependence yes, between the level of alcohol uh, in blood and the speed of the reaction, yes? But uh, we will see this better if we use uh, Kremer coefficient V. So Kremer coefficient V will be calculated uh, here. The V value is equal to uh, 36.79 divided by uh, 100, 100 and the square root from this value 0 0.603 0 0.603 and this is element of range 0 and 1 yeah, so again if 1 is maximum you know where we are placed yes 
uh, 0.603. So we can see that the relation probably exists, yes, between the level of alcohol and blood and the speed of the reaction. This is the reason why in uh, most of countries in the world is uh, prohibited to drink alcohol before driving. We will move uh, to different type of uh, analysis, yes, but uh, again it will be a part of uh, analysis of dependence, yes. Uh, we observed 12 students, how many points they got from the final test, uh, probably from statistics, because uh, there is a range from 0 to 60 points, yes. Uh, four from these students uh, were always attending the classes of one of three teachers. Uh, we have here fictive names, Mr. McDonald, Mr. King and uh, Mr. Benz. Uh, these, uh, these teachers will be denoted like teacher number one, teacher number two and teacher number three. Uh, and there is a question, has the person of the teacher the influence on the number of achieved points uh, from the final test? So, there is uh, a group of students Yes, divide it to three uh, individual groups, yes, uh, belong to a particular teacher and we would like to verify if there is a dependence, dependence of the factor of teacher, yes, on the number of achieved points, yes, if the teacher influence the students, the number of achieved points, yes? So again, the question is if there is a dependence and uh, the size of this dependence, the strength of the dependence, yes? Uh, this is uh, ANOVA, analysis of variance. We must analyze the variance uh, inside this statistical sample and uh, we will evaluate the results. So uh, I will show to you the formulas and uh, I will solve this small example on the whiteboard for you. Okay, so are you able to see this? I rewrite it, uh, the values uh, from the table on the whiteboard we have here observations, observations uh, XJE, yes, uh, divided to three groups. As you can see, uh, the first group, Mr. McDonald, uh, the second group, Mr. Uh, King, and the third group, Mr. Benz. Yes? So three teachers uh, and four students. And uh, for the calculation of uh, effect size, calculation of effect size, we need to know uh, two types of sum of squares. Yes, sum of squares treatment and sum of squares total. Sum of squares. TR. Uh, in literature you can find uh, treatment or theoretical or explained yes, sum of squares divided by sum of squares total. Yes. It's uh, necessary to write here that sum of squares total is equal to summation sum of squares TR, treatment or theoretical, yes, sum of squares, plus, uh, and uh, the second one is error, sum of squares, sum of squares, error, yes. Uh, so, we need to calculate treatment and total. Uh, so, I will start with uh, treatment, sum of squares, yes sum of squares, PR, treatment sum of squares. So, I will check your formulas and uh, we need to calculate summation through all J and there is a difference. Uh, X, J, 
mean minus total mean squared and uh, it's weighted by mj. So we need to calculate uh, the mean, the average uh, of all students. Yes? This will be calculated for example here x with stripe yes it's uh, very easy because this mean is a simple summation of 12 values divided by 12 yes so please do this 53 plus 47 plus 55 plus 50 plus 42 plus 48 plus 48 plus 50 plus 39 plus 46 plus 39 plus 43 so the denominator is uh, 560 denominator is 12 so the mean is 46.67 points yes so this is the total mean, I will write it here, 46.67, yes, and this mean will be used here. Okay, so what we need else? Uh, individual means, individual averages, uh, x, j with stripe. So uh, the means, the averages, for the particular teacher, yes? So it will be again very easy because uh, it's a summation of four values divided by four, yes? So for example here, uh, number one will be 53 plus 47 plus 55 plus 50. So there is uh, 205 divided by 4 and the result is divided by 4 51 51 .25. yes so this is the first uh, important mean yes okay so uh, we can continue uh, second group yes mr uh, Bands, yes, for a good example, or king. So 42 plus 48 plus 48 plus 50, uh, 100, 188 divided by 4, and the result is uh, 47, yes, 47 points. And the final is 39 plus 46 plus 39 plus 43. Uh, 167 divided by 4 divided by 4 uh, 41 41.75 41 41.75 yes so you have here calculated these means yes these uh, individual averages uh, okay, so there is the formula, yes, and we can solve these square differences weighted by absolute frequencies. So, uh, I remember this formula, or I can rewrite this formula here, summation through all j, x j with stripe, minus x with stripe, squared, weighted by m j, yes. So this will be deleted, and uh, this will be deleted, and here, uh, 51.25 minus this mean, the total mean, 46.67 squared, weighted by 4 students. Why 4? Because you can see that we have here 4 values. Yes? And we can continue, 47 minus 46.67 squared, uh, weighted by 4 students, yes? And uh, we can continue here, 41.75 minus uh, 46.67 uh, it's squared, weighted by 4 students, 
Yes, so you can see uh, that this is easy. Yes, uh, I will solve this. 51.25 minus 46.67 squared. Uh, weighted by four students. So there is uh, 83, 83.91. Uh, yes, 91. And we can continue. 47 minus 46.67 squared weighted by 4 0 0.44 0 0.44 and we can continue 41.75 minus 46.67 squared uh, weighted by 4 students 96.8 83. Okay, so uh, I need a space where I will write this result because this must be deleted because I need uh, more space on the whiteboard. So, sum of squares treatment, yes, treatment or theoretical sum of squares will be summation of these three values so I will do this, I will calculate this 83.91 plus 0.44 plus 96.83 uh, 181.18 181.18 so this is treatment sum of squares. We must continue, yes? Uh, we must calculate the total sum of squares. So I will delete this and I will check the formulas and uh, we will calculate the total sum of squares. So sum of squares total is equal to uh, there is square difference uh, xje xje and the total mean squared yes uh, sorry I uh, don't have here summation yes so please sum of squares total is summation through all j, summation through all e, and now it's j, e, and the mean squared. Yes, so this is all right. I will check it. Yes, uh, this is all right. Okay, so uh, we will calculate it. Yes, uh, I will do it here. Uh, there will be friends. x, J E minus X with stripe squared. Yes, and uh, we must solve here uh, 12 uh, partial values. Yes, so the value 53 minus 46.67. This mean, this mean. Yes, and uh, don't forget that this is in squares, yes? And you can continue. 47 minus 46.67 squared. Uh, 55 minus 46.67 squared. 50 minus 46.67 squared. Uh, you are allowed to use Excel, yes? because you will lock this cell, yes, and uh, it's very easy because you can copy uh, the formulas, yes, uh, 42 minus 46.67 uh, squared, 48 minus 46.67 squared, Again, 48 minus 46.67 squared, and uh, finally 50 minus 46.67 squared. Yes, 
this will be the retail uh, because we need a, a space and the last group yes, there is 39 minus 46.67 squared 46 minus 46.67 squared uh, 39 minus 46.67 squared and last uh, 43 minus 46.67 squared yes so uh, 12 partial values Yes, and uh, I will do this. 53 minus 46.67 squared, uh, 40.07. 40.07. 47 minus 46.67 squared, 0 0.11. 0 0.11. 55 minus. Uh, 46.67 squared, uh, 69, 69.39, uh, uh, 50 minus 46.67 squared, 11.09, 11 11.09, 11 uh, okay, 42. 42 minus 46.67 squared, 21.81. 21 21 uh, 48. 48 minus 46.67 squared, uh, 1.77. 1.77. Uh, there will be again 1.77 and 50, I already had 50 here, so 11.09, yes, 79, 39 minus 46.67 squared, 58.83, uh, 46, 46 minus 46.67 squared, is 0 0.45, 0 0.45, uh, 79, uh, 58.83, and the last value 43 minus 46.67 squared, uh, 13, 13 point, 47. Okay, so 12 values, yes? And the summation, the summation of these 12 values will be sum of squares, total, total sum of squares, yes? So, I will do this, I will calculate it, 40.07 plus 0 0.11 plus 69.39 plus 11.09 plus 21.81 plus 1.77 plus uh, 1.77 plus 11.09 plus 58.83 plus 0.45 plus 58.83 plus 13.47 200, 288 point 68. So this should be uh, the total sum of squares. Yes. Okay, so we have practically everything for the calculation of effect size. Yes, because this is the ratio sum of squares treatment and sum of squares total. For the verification that I calculated the treatment and total sum of squares correctly, uh, I will calculate here uh, just for illustration and the training yes, error sum of squares. We know that uh, sum of squares uh, total is a summation of sum of squares treatment and uh, sum of squares 
error. Yeah, so it's very easy to calculate sum of squares error like sum of squares total minus sum of squares uh, treatment. Yes. So in our situation sum of squares error is equal to 288.68 minus uh, 181.18 Yes, so I will use the calculator this value minus 181.18 uh, 107 107.5 So I will try to solve According to formulas, sum of squares error yes, it's a summation through uh, all E, summation through all E, and summation through all J, uh, X, uh, J, E, and X, J with stripe squared. Yes? So I will try to calculate again 12 uh, partial values, uh, square differences, their summation and the result must be uh, very close to this value, yes? I believe, I think that uh, I will reach a little bit different value because of decimals, yes? Uh, but it should be around 107.5 yes. so uh, there will be another column x uh, j e minus x j with stripe squared yes so i will delete this because we need a lot of space yes and uh, we will calculate 12 partial results. This mean is individual mean for the particular group of students, yes? Yeah? So we must change the mean, change this mean when we cross this line, yes? So uh, watch the table. Uh, 53, yes, uh, minus uh, this mean 51.25 this is in squares yes and we can continue three times yes 47 minus 51.25 uh, squared uh, 55 minus 51.25 uh, squared and finally 50 minus 51.25 squared and there is the line yes we finished with the first group and we will continue with another mean yes the mean for the second group of students uh, 42 minus 47 squared 48 minus 47 squared 48 minus 47 squared and 50 minus 47 squared yes okay so one two three four values and again there's the line yes and we must change the mean so uh, 39 minus 41.75 squared 46 minus 41.75 squared 39 minus 41.75 uh, squared and uh, finally 43 minus 41.75 squared yes so again the line but oof there is the end yes equal sign equal sign equal sign equal sign and again 12 individual values yes so i will solve this uh, 53 minus 51.25 uh, squared uh, 3.06 3.06 
47 minus 51.25 squared. Uh, 18.06 18.06 uh, 55 minus 51.25 squared 14.06 uh, 50 minus 51.25 squared 1.56 1.56 uh, Okay 5 squared is uh, 25, uh, 1 squared is 1, 1 and 3 squared is 9, yes? So you can see this is easy and we can continue. Uh, 39 minus 41.75 squared, uh, 7.56. 46 uh, minus 41.75 squared 18.06 18 uh, mm -hmm. 39 minus 41.75 squared 7.56 7.56 and uh, finally 43 minus 41.75 squared 1.56 1.56 uh, Okay, so summation Summation of these 12 values should be sum of squares error and uh, I calculated here 107.5 Yes, am I right? Uh, so, we will see uh, 3.06 plus 18.06 plus 14.06 plus uh, 1.56 plus 25 plus 1 plus 1 plus 9 plus 7.56 plus 18.06 plus 7.56 plus 1.56 107 point 48 so it's amazing uh, everything is calculated correctly, yes? So this was a bonus, just a bonus for you, yes? Because we, uh, we don't need it, yes? We need uh, treatment and total sum of squares. This is the proof that I calculate everything correctly, yes? Uh, okay, so the effect size. Effect size will be calculated here. Effect size like a ratio 181.18 and 288.68. So the effect size is equal to. 181.18 divided by 288.68 uh, 0 0.628 Okay, so what we calculated Effect size is a very useful statistic because this effect size uh, is from range 0 and 1, yes? Uh, we try to explain yes, the dependence, the influence uh, of the factor of teacher, Mr. McDonald, Mr. Benz, Mr. King, yes? The factor of teacher on the number of achieved points, yes? And prob probably there is a dependence, yes, because we calculated the size of this effect, yes, the size of this dependent, because we know that this size is between value 0 and 1, and this power, yes, this strength, this power is uh, 0.628, yes. Uh, you can also interpret this, for example. Uh, in percent, yes, 62.8% strength from 100%, yes. Uh, if the 
denominator yes in the denominator treatment theoretical explained sum of squares will be the same like total sum of squares yes error sum of squares will be equal to zero and fx size is one equal to one or close to one the perfect strength the perfect dependence yes so this effect size is uh, very useful because as i already said uh, its range is from zero to one and we can see the power we can see the strength we can see the strength of this dependence we will continue and uh, because this example is uh, very easy we will solve uh, this in Excel yes, because uh, there is not enough steps uh, using experiment there was tested upon consumption using three types of petrol uh, there were done five experiments uh, with each uh, petrol and we would like to fill in ANOVA table and try to decide in descriptive way only uh, whether the consumption depends on the type of petrol uh, so uh, you can imagine that we have uh, three types uh, of petrol for example from three different petrol stations yes uh, AGIP, OMV, Shell, etc. Yes? So we have three petrol stations, uh, three types of petrol, and uh, using three types of petrol, uh, we done five experiments with each petrol. Yes? So total number of observation is three times five. Uh, so 15, 15 observation divided to three groups. Like in the previous example, we had three teachers, yes, Mr. McDonald, Benz and King. Now we have Shell, Ajip and OMV, petrol stations, yes, and five experiment, uh, five experiments in the case of each uh, group, yes. And there is the question, uh, there is the question whether the consumption depends on the type of petrol, whether the factor, the factor of the petrol, yes, uh, influence the consumption, yes, average consumption in uh, gallons per kilometer, uh, gallons per 100 kilometers, gallons per 100 miles, liters per 100 kilometers, so we don't know yes, these units, we don't know these units, but uh, the consumption, yes? Uh, so we would like to measure the tightness of potential dependence. So, uh, what is important here? There is an ANOVA table and the detailed ANOVA table you will see in week 11, yes? Mr. Hellman will speak about this. But uh, now we should know that each ANOVA table has uh, three uh, rows, yes? And uh, we can find here the source of variability. And we have here calculated uh, two types uh, of sum of squares, yes? There is uh, total sum of squares and uh, these two sum of squares uh, before are model or treatment or explained sum of squares, which is unknown, and error residual unexplained sum of squares, yes? So we know that total sum of squares is a summation of treatment sum of squares and error sum of squares, yes? Treatment sum of squares can be called model sum of squares, explained sum of squares, uh, theoretical sum of squares, yes? So first, we need to calculate treatment sum of squares and after the ratio of treatment sum of squares and the total sum of squares is effect size, effect size, yes? So please do this, it's uh, possible to calculate it here, directly here, so there is uh, equal sign, uh, total sum of squares minus error sum of squares, yes? 
and you will see here treatment sum of squares, the nominator for effect size. Yes. So this uh, treatment sum of squares is here, and uh, effect size will be calculated here. Yes, effect size like ratio 0.17 and 0.25 effect size is from range 0 and 1 yes and we are able to interpret the strength of the dependence yes the strength of the dependence uh, of the type of the petrol yes on consumption on consumption so this value divided by this value yes so you will see effect size here 0 0.6799 so it's almost 0 0.68 yes if you use only two decimals it's 68 0 0.68 so it's uh, more than 0 0.6666 uh, 2 divided by 3, yes, 2 divided by 3, so uh, you can see the power, you can see the strength, you can see the effect, yes, uh, of, uh, the, uh, of the dependence uh, of the type of the petrol on consumption of this fuel, yes, of uh, this uh, petrol. So you can see that it's easy, and about degrees of freedom, mean squares and some Fisher statistics about statistical testing we will speak later now it's only in a descriptive way we will finish uh, our today's seminar with this example what's written here uh, at 15 boys at the elementary school that was measured how many of push-ups and squats they are able to do yes how many push-ups and squats uh, so we can expect that if the boy is strong he is able to do a lot of squats and a lot of push-ups yes and uh, if the boy is weak yes he is not able to do a lot of squats and he is also not able to do uh, a lot of push-ups yes so, we would like to calculate when there is mutual linear dependence between the number of push-ups and number of squats. Yeah? So, we would like to calculate uh, some, measure, uh, some measure of, uh, of the power of dependence between variable 1 and variable 2. Yes? So, the strength of the dependence uh, using appropriate coefficient. Uh, we will use correlation coefficient, yes? Correlation coefficient, so if you check your formulas, uh, there is a correlation analysis. Correlation coefficient is denoted R for variable X and variable Y. We have here squats and push-ups, two variables. One is X, one is Y, yes? And we would like to calculate uh, this. So what we need? We need only uh, some means, yeah? some averages. Uh, average of variable x, average of variable y, uh, average from multiplication of variable x and y, average from second power of variable x, and average from second power of a variable y. And that's all. So we will calculate these averages in Microsoft Excel. And after, I will use these values uh, in this formula. Okay, so we are back in our table with squats and push-ups and you can see that I denoted squats like uh, variable x and push-ups variable y, yes? Can you see this uh, strong boy as he is able to do 8 squats and 64 push-ups, yes? And uh, can you see this one, number 4? 
he is not able to do any squat and any push up. Yes? So uh, we will calculate now uh, the second power of a variable x and the second power of a variable y. Yes? So there will be x powered by 2 and y powered by 2. Yes? So uh, I will use right button format cells superscript yes okay and there will be uh, all right right button superscript okay yes so second powers and finally uh, the multiplication of variable x and variable y yes so every time for calculation of uh, correlation coefficient we need Variable x, variable y, uh, second power of variable x, second power of variable y, and multiplication between these two variables. Yeah? So we will do this. Uh, it will be very easy. There you can write equal sign, this value times this value one more time. Yes? For calculation of second power of variable y, there will be this value multiplied by this value one more time. Yes, so it's very easy. And uh, so I will use both. I will calculate everything here. And here you can see push ups times push ups one more time. Yes, so we have here calculated these uh, second powers. And multiplication, simple multiplication, this value times this value. Yeah? So please do this. Equal sign, this value times this value. Enter. OK, OK, bold, and I will copy these values. And what we need. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 means. Yes? Uh, we are able to calculate the mean, average, classic average. Yes? So I will write here a function equal sign uh, average returns the average arithmetic mean. Yes? So I will open parenthesis. I will select uh, the 15 values here. As you can see, also this uh, 15th value is selected, yes? Uh, okay, so enter, calculate this mean, yes? And uh, we will use two decimals, uh, yellow, bold, center. And if you copy this uh, formula, yes, to the right, you will calculate one, two, three, four more means. And I will rewrite these means on the whiteboard and we will calculate the correlation coefficient. So I have rewritten these values on the whiteboard and the calculation of correlation coefficient. In the nominator we have xy mean minus x mean times y mean, yes? And uh, in denominator there is a square root and here we have uh, x squared mean uh, minus uh, x mean squared, yes? Times, and the same with variable y y squared mean minus y mean squared. Okay, so we will use these values and we will calculate the correlation coefficient. So, value here, 108.80 minus multiplication 3.20 times uh, mean from y 23.80. 0, 7, yes, and this will be divided by, there is uh, a root, yes, uh, there is a root and we have here uh, x squared 
mean so there will be 15.47 minus this mean squared 3.2 squared times and the same for variable i uh, y squared mean y squared mean 804 804.27 minus uh, minus uh, y mean squared 23 23.07 squared yes so I know everything so I can use the calculator and calculate this so there will be uh, 15.47 minus 3.2 uh, squared I have here 5.23 yes there I have uh, 804.27 minus 23.07 squared uh, two seven uh, two point zero five. Okay, multiplication uh, five point twenty three and a square root square root from this value. So I have the denominator and now nominator one o eight point eight minus. 3.2 times 23.07 and this divided by denominator okay so i have correlation coefficient equal to 0 0.927 927 it's all right because we know that correlation coefficient Yes, is element uh, is element uh, of range minus one plus one. Yes, if this coefficient is close to minus one, there is a strong uh, negative linear dependence between variable x and variable y. Yes, strong negative dependence. If the coefficient is close to plus one. There is strong positive, yes, positive correlation, positive dependence between variable x and variable y. And if correlation coefficient is close to zero, there is no dependence, yes, there is no dependence, there is no correlation. So now we have uh, this correlation coefficient very close to plus one, so there is strong positive correlation dependence between the number of squats and number of push-ups. So uh, I was true, if the boy is strong, yes, he is able to do a lot of squats and a lot of push-ups. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, we finished this uh, correlation analysis and next week uh, on our fifth seminar we will start with descriptive way of uh, regression models. So that's all for today. Have a nice day and bye bye.